সবাইকে স্বাগত জানাচ্ছি আমি মাধউদ্দিন টি স্পোর্টসের সুপার সাব প্রোগ্রামে এবং আজকের আমার অতিথি খুব বেশি স্পেশাল একজন এন্ড শি ইজ নান আদার দ্যান দ্য লেজেন্ড অফ ইন্ডিয়ান স্পোর্টস আঞ্জুম চোপড়া আঞ্জুম জি ওয়েলকাম थैंक यू सो मच pleasure having you here my pleasure thank you very much for the introduction as well <laughs> <laughs> so you've been here for a long time like uh, you've been in the past uh, how many times you've been here in bangladesh uh i've been here i think uh, twice or thrice earlier prior to this trip and it has largely been to cover cricket i think the first trip for me was uh, for the icc t20 world cup i was here for less than a week and uh, yeah for the bangladesh premier league uh, i went up and down but that was my second trip or the third trip or whatever and then now this the opportunity of working for the uh, bonga bandhu t20 tournament has arrived now so i'm back here আমার দর্শকদেরকে আগে জানিয়ে রাখি আমি ইংলিশে কথা বলছি কারণ আমার অতিথি বাংলা কিন্তু বুঝেন বাট স্টিল আমি ইংলিশে কথা বলছি কারেক্ট বাংলা বুঝেন थोड़ा बहुत समझ आता है बिकॉज आई यूज्ड टू स्टे इन अ बंगाली कॉलोनी इन दिल्ली एंड चित्रंजन पार्क सो ऑब्वियसली आई हैड फ्रेंड्स बट वो सभी फ्रेंड्स यूज्ड टू स्पीक इंग्लिश तो जब आपस में बोंगला बात करते थे तो थोड़ा बहुत अमी जानी एनीथिंग एल्स इन बंगाली कैमो नाचो कैमो नाचो आई डेफिनेटली नो द बेस्ट वर्ड आई लाइक इज तारा तारी करबे तारा तारी करबे तारा तारी करबे फास्ट 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 डोंट वेस्ट टाइम निजर काज नहीं है खूबी सचेतन एवं ट्रूली एक जन प्रोफेशनल एथलिट ए बर्तमान कमेंट्री जगते नारी कमेंट्री मध्य क्योंकि एगिए रोन और साउथ इस्ट एशिया जो बी एकम्र नारी कमेंटेटर क्योंकि अंजुम चोपड़ा अंजुम आई वज टकिंग अबाउट यू एंड गोयिंग थ्रु अबाउट यूर बांगलेशी कानेक्शन कैन यू लेट एस नो एनीथिंग मोर अबाउट बांगलेश वेल आई आई मिन आई डोट हाव फैमिली हियर आई एम श्योर if there is a family i don't know about it but i think just it's an extension for me to say that uh, i've been a part of this setup no because i was obviously not born when when a lot of things geographically got changed but uh, the first time when i came here as i mentioned i was here for the t20 uh, world cup and i think that was 2012 uh or 2014 uh 2014, 2014 the icc t20 right. world cup 2014 i was here for a, a week or so i didn't feel a lot of difference because i've played a lot of cricket in calcutta um calcutta or guwahati you know eastern belt of uh, india so when i came here i felt it's just an extension of calcutta and to be fair if i if i fluently know bangla then i don't think there'll be any difference because the only difference is that you get your passport gets stamped the moment you get uh, into bangladesh and you need a visa other than that if i know bangla i can just pass off like any local so for me I I think it's about the connect with the people and once you know the language that's why I'm working on my bangla and if you know the language food obviously is not a big problem and uh, the weather is also pretty similar right. to India so that's why I just feel that because it's just an extension of uh, Calcutta and uh, I do have good friends from Bengal whether it's in the cricketing industry or from the Bollywood industry so I f- I feel pretty much uh, it's it's just an extension of my home must have roam around the streets in dhaka any place you know and want to walk around <laughs> again uh yes i in fact i the first time when i went to selet and the rather the only time till now that i've been to selet and to chittagong as well um i really liked it i think the the ground in chittagong is brilliant right. um it's it's very nice it's scenic also selet is very scenic and somehow i i've played in uh, silchar So that's a tea estate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's probably Silet is pretty much similar. Right? Silet is very much similar. So the first time when I landed up in Silet, I said, "Oh, this is also in Bangladesh," and it says, "Yeah, a lot of garden tea estates and stuff like that." So it, again, it's very scenic. It's very um, you know t- touristy kind of a place. So I've been around there. Short trips. I didn't get much time to go around, uh, but uh, we were in Dhaka. Probably yes, walking around the streets of Gulshan. I've I've taken uh, my flight was delayed by many hours when I had to go back to Delhi uh, to Mumbai rather uh, for one of the functions, and I was walking up and down the streets of Gulshan. I was huffing and puffing in <laughs> anger, and <laughs> the flight had got delayed because my function I couldn't reach in time. So in the bargain, I was just walking up and down, up and down. So I've seen these streets, I've seen the entire block, but uh, not much. I haven't, I haven't been taken around Bangladesh. I haven't been taken around Dhaka much. I'm, I'm always game. Please, please take me around. Show me the scenic places and show me places other than uh, the uh, stadium, Mirpur. I've taken enough rides to the stadium and back. I want to see some other routes. 
I should better take you to my place. It's called Old Dhaka in Lalbagh. Absolutely. There's a Lalbagh fort there, and very historical place. And talking about the Old Dhaka, so food comes up again. Uh, ah. What's your favorite food here? I love fish curry. Uh, <laughs> even back home, um, if I get, I mean, because I've grown up in a uh, Bengali colony, so you know, we, less than 100 meters away from my house um, was one of the biggest markets where uh, fish right. used to be sold. And uh, I always had access to that. And in my house, fish is obviously made. So uh, I love fish. Uh, it's coming here again, grilled or curry, or and you, you just need a little specific touch to it. And that uh, when you have a local chef, he would know the flavor that needs to get added. So it doesn't need to be the spicy, the North Indian spicy fish. It just needs to be the right um, ingredients that makes it just perfect. Is Anjum Chopra a good cook? Uh, I can cook, I can manage. Yeah, I, I do have some taste that I can offer uh, in my food. Uh, it won't be insipid, it won't be tasteless, it won't be that bad, it'll be okay. I, I'm sure if I have guests at home, they will not go hungry. <laughs> Anjum Chopra, tell me one word that comes to your mind when we talk about Bangladesh. Um, developing and in a very positive manner, in a very uh, fast manner. And when I say developing, it's not developing in a slow pace, developing in a very uh, rapid pace. I see the, the rate, the currency rate uh, of uh, the Bangladeshi taka to an Indian rupee and it's uh, progressing in leaps and as I said, when I was here the last time, it was nearing about uh, 50 paisa uh, to uh, a Bangladeshi taka, now it's almost 8.87. And the kind of development that I've seen, the kind of development, even when I follow, because I do follow what's happening around, um, they say the next decade or so, Bangladesh is going to overtake India. That's commendable. Even to analyze and to have a vision that in the next decade, it's going to overtake India. And India is, is huge in comparison to Bangladesh. Even in terms of economy, it's, if it's going that very well, that's why I say the word developing, if it's there, it's, it's very good to see. And that's why I want to see the other streets of Dhaka and other places in Bangladesh. Why should I be confined? Okay, these days we are in a bubble, so it's okay, I can manage. But after that, yes. Doshok, Aro Onek interesting kotha shunbo, tawe ragi amra break theke fi yash tuse. Welcome back, Doshok. Abar hoye she porechi and amar special guest, Anjum Chopra. Me, amar Onek prashno royeche, to be honest, having this legend beside me and Anjum uh, talking about cricket obviously uh, you're the first Indian captain to win a series overseas and you're the only first in, in fact uh, Indian cricketer to play 100 ODI tests and you're the, you have all achieved everything. Uh, tell me about your cricketing life, uh, uh, how's been the start? Um, to start with I'll say I belong to a family of sports people uh, my maternal grandfather used to be um, a uh, Commonwealth and an Asian Games athlete and also cricket commentator. So from there on to say my father, he's uh, a very keen golfer. He used to play cricket, badminton in school. My mother has won a car rally. Uh, okay. Yeah, good year car rally, Delhi, Jaipur, Delhi. She participated the next year again. Uh, that's way back in 1983, 1984. Uh, she won a Delhi, uh, Delhi, uh, Dehradun, Delhi again. I mean, she she finished first, but then she lost out on the trophy because of, you know, advanced entry points and you uh, lose out on some points. But but so she's also uh, you know been into sports. My brother used to play cricket, under 17, under 19, he's played for Delhi. I hail from Delhi. My mama ji, that is my mother's younger brother. He's played cricket right up to the India level, both presidents 11. So there's been a lot of sports in my family. My pets are also there. They also love sports. They also play a lot. So when I uh, play with the ball at home, rubber ball or the cricket ball, they just pick it up and run away. So they also like playing sports. This basically, you live and love cricket, right? <laughs> Absolutely. I think, I think I love sports. So cricket probably became uh, the flavor in my household. That was the sport that was discussed the maximum. So I've actually grown up uh, hearing cricket and hearing cricket stories. So when we used to hear stories about Mr. Sunil Gavaskar, Mr. Bishan Singh Bedi, Mr. Kapil Dev, it was like when I met them, it was like I've already known them since my childhood. And and I'm, I've, you know, just that, the dress, the, I won't even say before a dressing room, I'll say I was, I was in a cricket ground before I was actually stepping onto one. So it's, it belonged to a, belonging to a family of sports people just helped me take to the sport uh, very keenly. 
and because such discussions happened from a very young age in my house i always felt that you know if such achievers are there in the family i should make sure that i am one and work towards it in whichever manner you never know, i was introduced i was introduced to the sport at the age of 9 my mother took me and my brother to uh, jawala nehru stadium in delhi that time uh, asian games had already happened so nehru stadium had come up uh, after the asia had and then the coach mr hardeep do over there he took trials and he threw a ball at me i caught it because i was in a habit of catching that cricket ball standing behind my brother and my uncle they used to play cricket in the backyard and i was a kid there because i have an elder brother so he they used to say no 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 batting bowling go and stand behind so you know how you have to just make sure that the ball doesn't go to the end of the street so i became a good slip fielder <laughs> because if i didn't stop that ball there i had to go end of the street to pick it up and then throw it back and that throw never reached <laughs> so again run pick up that ball and throw it again so that's how the sport i was introduced to sport and it was just that i wanted to become better each day in in whatever i was doing so that the the bar kept ri- rising higher and higher for me and the target went further and further ahead for me so that was the way well uh, as i get to know that you have born and brought up in a sporting background but still there are some barriers for women so whenever they play sports and all uh, obviously things have changed over the years now but uh, when you start playing back then uh, did you face anything first oh yeah absolutely a lot of resistance from uh, not only my immediate i mean obviously not my immediate family but others in the family they always had objections about why you're you know promoting a girl to play cricket why are promoting if she has to go and play a sport let her play basketball let her play badminton so i did play basketball but let her play an individual sport because they felt that if even if i was playing a sport individual sport for me would have been better because you know you're in control of your own performance and i don't blame that because yes from the history that my uncle went through and then even my brother is like if if you're a good performer and you're playing an individual sport your performance is not dependent on anyone else so that was one of the issues as well but i think growing up nobody knew what women's cricket was of course uh, mr kapil dev and his team had won by the time i started playing cricket they had already won the world cup so cricket was popular in the country but not women's cricket and so if the eyebrows still went up like cricket oh women's cricket girls play is it oh okay so that kind of you know the change of mindset started happening but because my family supported they introduced me to the sport so a lot of these question marks you know never bothered me because when i used to get back home after practice it's not that i was running away from education or anything it was just because they had introduced me to the sport and resistance is there even today i think questions it's not easy uh, in spite of the sport gaining popularity after the 2017 women's world cup despite that it's not an easy ride it's not that a women's cricketer is welcome anywhere yes she's identified better but the resistance is still there talking about breaking the barriers the winner of arjun awards padma shri awards uh, how do you feel after such achieving these feats that is already gone done and just it time for a new one <laughs> so, <laughs> well don't rest on past laurels <laughs> people know that you've done that already so yes i feel humbled about it to be fair when i was standing um in the president's house in the rashtrapati bhavan that we call it and when i was standing there to receive the uh, you know the honor from uh, the president of india so that it's a very short ceremony it's about a 45 minute ceremony and every a lot of people get felicitated that day but when you stand there you know this is about a 45 50 second uh, time that you individually get when your citation is read out a little bio data is read out especially for the arjuna award and then you walk up to the president he or she puts a medal on you and you acknowledge get a picture clicked and walk back but those that probably 30 seconds or like 25 30 seconds when your citation is being read out the first time i was there believe me my entire <laughs> entire life <laughs> just went around me <laughs> in those 40 seconds i would have seen everything whatever was there in my memory from a 9 year old to a whatever age i was when i received that arjuna award obviously i was 
above 25 28 so whenever i received that award everything it came in a flashback and it went like this so the struggle that you're mentioning about the hardships um getting dropped from the indian team getting picked into the indian team performing with the indian team and and everything so when i when i walked back and when i came back home i just realized that all those struggles i think it's just a part and parcel of the sport it's a part and parcel of life and i feel we are fortunate that we play a sport because that teaches you practical life lessons free of cost and nothing else teaches you that because for everything else you have to pay sport teaches you free of cost you learn to lose you learn to win you learn to cry and you learn to celebrate and if you can just wade through that even if it's for 45 seconds i think that that glorious moment that comes into a sports person's life that you're acknowledged as one of the top athletes in the country somehow i feel it just seems worth everything it just seems worth it standing there so and when i went back again for the padma shri i just felt like i'm a blessed one it doesn't happen how many padma shris are there in the country 1000 1100 not more than 1200 people 1200 people in a population of more than a billion people so i just feel doesn't matter as long as uh, you're getting acknowledged awarded recognized for your achievements they don't come easy you have to still work for it i'm in conversation with the most humble person i've ever met i'll come back again after the break সবাইকে স্বাগত আবার আমি রয়েছি নানা দাদের আঞ্জুম চোপড়ার সাথে এবং অনেক ব্যাপারে কথা বলছিলাম এবং আরও অনেক কিছু জানার রয়েছে আঞ্জুম আই উড লাইক টু নো হাউ ডু ইউ কাম আপ ইন দিস কমেন্ট্রি ইজ দ্যাট আ প্ল্যান ওয়ান ইট ওয়াজ এ প্ল্যান ইট ওয়াজ ইন টু থাউজেন্ড অ্যান্ড টু আই থিঙ্ক দ্য ফার্স্ট টাইম আই এভার ওয়েন্ট ইন টু আ স্টুডিও ওয়াজ ইন নাইনটিন নাইনটি নাইন ওয়েন আই জাস্ট ফিনিশ দ্য টোর অফ ইংল্যান্ড অ্যান্ড কেম ব্যাক অ্যান্ড দ্যাট টাইম ইউজ টু হ্যাভ আ স্টার নিউজ চ্যানেল uh now it's become ndtv so they called me for an interview that was the very first time that i actually went into a studio and i saw so many lights and cameras and somewhere around 2002 i got introduced to doing uh, you know analysis program in a studio uh first it was an all india radio which was a radio uh, channel which called me and then sports channels a news channel started uh, calling me for that but 2005 i got a break uh, doing um a program called fourth empire in doordarshan that's a national broadcaster and that was a pre mid and post match analysis program that i started doing and over there one of the days i got introduced to commentary i had head no tail of what commentary was and went to pause went to break nothing just thrown into the deep ocean learned to swim or drown so of course i didn't know but then i was i was taught a few things a few important details um but so it wasn't it wasn't planned it i was just introduced to it and because i used to play um i think mr bakku at that point of time the producer of the show gave me an opportunity to be a part of that program and that because it was a national broadcaster because it was that was the only channel covering uh, men's cricket and i was doing men's cricket hardly women's cricket used to be on tv so you know that became a little uh, popular thing at that point of time and uh, once ipl started uh, introducing women commentators that was somewhere around 2015 uh, they gave me a break and that's where full fledgedly commentary started and that was the first time probably i had i was covering an entire series or an entire tournament and over there again i realized you have to quickly pick up otherwise thank you so much it was nice knowing you that comment might just come in <laughs> so yeah that that's how it just started and because i for for me i think i feel very privileged to go back to the ground and i have as a commentator access to the pitch you know i might be who's who but how many people still can get on to the ground while the match is happening and as a commentator i still can be on the ground you know watch where the toss is happening be a part of uh, when the players are warming up so as a player it's just an extension of my my role as a player so it wasn't planned but once i got introduced into this i obviously like it and i just felt that 
if I've got a chance, if I've, if the Almighty has given me an opportunity, make the most of it. So don't rest back on your laurels. Make sure that the opportunity becomes better each day. And I learn the ropes of commentary as much as possible. Right, and obviously you have followed Bangladesh cricket as well over the years. Uh, your take on Bangladesh cricket, uh, how it developed over the years? Brilliant. I think it's been uh, nearly two decades now that uh, you know Bangladesh has been uh, there playing cricket at the international level. When they got affiliation into test cricket, I thought that was a bit early because that time test cricket, you know, when, when a team starts playing cricket, you start playing T20 and one day cricket. T20 was just getting introduced at that point of time. And for any player to get introduced into the format, it's easier. But then when you talk about test cricket, then obviously you say, okay, longest format. Like for example, Afghanistan today. Afghanistan has got test status, but when you say, let's let Afghanistan play a test series, then you'll think, I hope it's not one-sided because you know it can be one-sided. So at that point of time, I felt they're a very good one-day team, but test match, okay. But the kind of, but then later I realized why test cricket a sta a status is important, why a one-day status is important because for me that was also an education that, you know, there is a process to give giving affiliation to a nation to play first-class cricket, to play not only T20. So you can't just say, okay, you play a T20 team, but you play a T20 match, but you can't play test cricket. It can't, it's not possible. So I got educated on that better. But the manner in which, you know, the team has progressed, the team has you know, gain that confidence and for, look, for anyone, I know it, it doesn't happen overnight. You have to play the best of the teams, you have to be relentless at it to ensure that you become better. And the manner in which Bangladesh team has become better, Mahmudullah, Tamim Iqbal, Mashraf Murtaza, these players, you know, even Earlier players used to have a spin trio, you know, they used to just, uh, I think, Rafiq, Muhammad Rafiq, Abdul Razak, Rabzul yeah. Razak right. Muhammad Rafiq, those three left arm spinners used to come in and tuck, 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 used to <laughs> bowl. So, they were probably the first ones when the team started winning. It's not that they were the first ones when the cricket started happening, but they were the ones who started getting Bangladesh cricket onto that map. And then, you know, this generation, which is into their 30s now, took it over. Mahmudullah, a match winner, match winner on any given day. Uh, Mushfikar Rahim, a match winner on any given day. So these talented players started coming in and you can straight away see that the next generation, if I'm talking, if I'm seeing a Parvez Imon straight away walk out of her under 19 World Cup team, walk into this tournament and hit a hundred. Look at that confidence that he's got of performing at that level. The under 19 team winning the World Cup, it doesn't come easy. And I know it for sure it doesn't come easy because you can't have an under-19 team winning a World Cup unless you have a proper structure going. Because if your senior team is not winning a World Cup, how can your under-19 team win? But that's where the structure comes in. Now when this lot gets graduated, that's, the ch that's where that the chances of your senior team obviously going out there and start winning a World Cup team happen. But it still starts from the top. You know, you're, you, need, you need these Icons, as I mentioned earlier, whether Mushfikar or Mahmudullah, to be there for players like, you know, uh, for, for players like Parvez, you want to be the icon players. And for them, the earlier lot, lot was the icon players. So it's, it's very nice and look where they are. I mean, reaching finals of the Under-19 World Cup, but prior to that, even the T20 World Cup, beating the best of teams. It might be that they've not won a World Cup, but you never take a Bangladesh team lightly. Talking about uh, Bongo won the T20 Cup now, uh, how you enjoy it so far and uh, how's the standard of cricket in this tournament so far? Very good. Um, I was here for the BPL and of course uh, I felt that, look I've covered IPL. I've straight away come out of IPL and I've covered BPL and I know that there is not a lot of gap. When I say the quality of cricket, there isn't a lot of, and I'll say, I won't say there's any gap. You know, it's just the packaging of it. It's just the positioning of the tournament. But if I look at the cricket, it's brilliant. From there, when I come in to say, this tournament, Bonga Bandha T20, and I'm saying players, as I mentioned about Parvez, Parvez Imon, smashing a hundred, you know, catches uh, coming through brilliantly from these young under-19 players, Akbar Ali playing a match-winning role, then I say, yeah, why not? I mean, it's wonderful and I think such tournament should be held every year. Because that's where it's not only the top players, it's the 
under 19 or the under 16s the under 16s will look at these guys under 19 and say look i want to be there in the squad the next time the next two years this tournament happens so that becomes a benchmark if they can't get into the bangladesh under 19 team at least who or maybe some players who miss out on being an under 19 player can get straight away into uh, a bonga bandhu t20 tournament you know it's it's like a challenger trophy how we play back in india in fact this is bigger than the challenger trophy because it has more players uh, you know uh, we 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 play a three team tournament that's a challenger trophy but this is a five team so you have more players coming in and you can rotate your players it's a longer tournament it's it's been very enjoyable and i'm sure the bcb i'm sure has done a lot of work as i say the results don't come out overnight it's it's proper structured proper planning ensuring that you know the players get the facilities and the monitoring as well of the players very good Thank you, Anjum Chopra. It's been a pleasure talking to you. And uh, you. can you say a goodbye word in Bangla? I don't say goodbyes. <laughs> uh, I've enjoyed my say a time here in Bangladesh, and I love being here. So, bhalo, bhalo ache, <laughs> superb. Thank you very much for having me here, and um, look forward to being here in the near future as well. Thank you, everyone, and this is Mazoudin wrapping up from here. <laughs>